Number 35. As an oil well is drilled, each new section of drill pipe supports its own weight and that of the pipe and drill bit beneath it. Calculate the stretch in a new 6 meter length of steel pipe that supports 3 kilometers of pipe having a mass of 20 kilograms per meter and a 100 kilogram drill bit. The pipe is equivalent in stiffness to a solid cylinder 5 centimeters in diameter. All right. So first thing is we're trying to find the stretch right on an object. Um, and we're talking about kind of compression tension, right? So what formula are we going to start with? We're going to start with Young's formula, right? The Young's modulus formula. So here it says the force of tension or compression is equal to Young's modulus times the change in length divided by the initial length of the object in question that we're trying to find the compression or uh, stretch of multiplied by the cross-sectional area of that object itself. So how do I solve? So let's just solve this for, I know I'm looking for change in length, so let me just solve this formula for delta L. How do I do that? Well, basically, these values are in the numerator, right on the right-hand side. So the trick would be put them in the denominator on the left-hand side, so that'll be YA, okay? And this value's in the denominator on the right-hand side, so put it in the numerator on the left-hand side. So that's what we need, all right? This is exactly how we're gonna calculate the change in length. I need to know the force, the initial length, Young's modulus, and the cross-sectional area. Okay, great. So this is my formula. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to look to find each of them. So let's first find the force, right? So they told us that um, every new section of pipe, su uh, pipe supports its own weight and that of the pipe and drill bit beneath it. So we added a new six meter length. Okay, so we got six meters. Then, and it's supporting not only itself at six meters, but a three and three kilometers of pipe, right? So three kilometers. Um, I know I have different units. This is meters, and then now I have kilometers. So just convert this right away to meters, right? Three kilometers is three thousand meters. Okay, just divide, just multiply it by a thousand. When I find, when I add these two up, I realize that I have th three thousand six meters total of pipe. Now, why did I have to find the total length? Well, they gave me the weight of the pipe in terms of length, that each meter of pipe weighs 20 kilograms. So therefore, if I take my 3,006 meters of pipe and multiply it by the value of 20 kilograms per one meter, notice the meters cancel, and that will leave me with the unit of mass, aka kilograms. So we get 3,006 times 20. So we get 6.01, so let me just let me just erase this a little bit, give me a little space. So 6.01 times 10 to the fourth, okay, kilograms. Now that's the total mass of the pipe, but it also says it's also supporting the 100 kilogram drill bit. So guess what I gotta do? Add 100 kilograms to this value. And when I do so, it becomes 6.02 times 10 to the fourth kilograms. Now this is the total mass of everything that's being supported by the new six meter length of pipe. So if this is the mass, how do I find the force? Simple, weight, right? Weight is equal to mass times gravity. So the weight here will be equal to 6.02 times 10 to the fourth multiplied by 9.80. So let's find that, okay? So 6.02 times 10 to the fourth times 9.8, we get a value of 5. Point, uh, really 5.90, right? 5.90 times 10 to the fifth, okay, times 10 to the fifth newtons. This is the weight, aka the force, right? So I found my F value, great. All right, so why don't we start plugging some stuff in? I'm gonna write the formula, write this on over here now, okay? So the force is uh, zero, 0 0.9, well, what am I talking about, zero? Five, 5.90 5 times 10 to the fifth, okay. What's the initial length of the pipe? Now, it's not the total length of all the pipes, right? What are we trying to calculate the stretch or compression of? Calculate the stretch of this pipe, right? The six meter, so that is the initial length. Six meters, not 3,006, okay? Very important to know what you're calculating for. All right, that whole thing is now divided by Young's modulus, and we're talking about a steel pipe here Right, so we gotta go to our table, find steel, and here's Young's modulus, 210. Remember, that's 210 times 10 to the ninth. So 210 times 10 to the ninth. Great, so I got that taken care of. 
And now all I need is my cross-sectional area. They told me that it's like a solid cylinder with five centimeters in diameter. So what does a cylinder look like? Well, it looks something like this, right? That's a terrible cylinder. It looks something like this, okay? And the diameter here is five centimeters. Now, if I had to draw or cut a cross-section here and you look down at it, what would be the shape of the object you just cut if you're looking down? That's a cross-section. That would look like in this particular case, it would look like a circle, right? And that circle has, there we go, that circle has a diameter, it told us, of five centimeters. So let's draw it nice and straight. So that's five, okay, centimeters. What's then the radius? Well, diameter is five centimeters. You know radius is half of the diameter, so that means it's two and a half centimeters. Now, I know I don't like the unit centimeters. i got to have everything in meters. So simply take now the 2.5 centimeters, all right, and convert that into meters. Just move the decimal two places to the left, or just divide that value by 100. It doesn't matter. And this would be the value in meters. Now, why do I need it in meters? Again, because all my values in this formula are in terms of meters. The lengths are in terms of meters. So now remember, I'm looking to calculate the cross-sectional area. So what's the area of this figure? Well, that's a circle. So the area of a circle right, is simply pi r squared. So area is equal to pi multiplied by r, which is 0 0.025 squared. So the area here will simply be, and plug it into the calculator, so pi times 0 0.025 squared. And we get a value of 1.96, right? Yeah, 1.96 times 10 to the minus 3, that's meters squared. That sounds great to me. Plug that in now. So we get a value over here of 1.96 times 10 to the minus 3. And lo and behold, we got everything we need to calculate the change in length, right? So now all we got to do is just plug it into the calculator. So we get 5.9 times 10 to the 5 times 6 divided by, hold bottom in parentheses, 210 times 10 to the 9 multiplied by 1.96 times 10 to the minus 3. And here we go. We get a value of 8.6, 8.6 times 10 to the minus 3. And that is in terms of meters, right? Yes, and that would be the same as 8.6 uh, millimeters, all right? So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe. That would be awesome. And I look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.